And I mentioned that we're gonna start with a little bit of history about the project, right? Well, here's a fun fact for all of you Greek mythology lovers. Our, miss, our space mission's name is Artemis I. In Greek mythology, Artemis was the goddess of, well, a lot of things, but one of them was vegetation. Also, she represented the moon. Now, now how appropriate is that? We have the Artemis mission that's gonna carry vegetation, these seeds, and orbit the moon. Now, also the name Apollo. Now, Apollo was a Greek god who represented the sun and he was the brother of Artemis. NASA also had a series of space missions called Apollo that went to the moon from 1961 up until 1972. So you see it's all connected, right? Pretty cool stuff. Now, you know, as exciting as the Moon Tree Project is, we've actually done it before, back with Apollo, right? Well, let's check in with our good friend, Dave Williams, who can tell you a little bit more about the history of the program. Dave? Thanks, MChat. Um, my name's Dave Williams, and I'm a planetary scientist at uh, Goddard Space Flight Center and at the, uh, the National Space Science Data Center, which is NASA's deep archive for uh, a lot of their spacecraft data. Stuart Rusa, back when he was in high school, for a summer job, he started working in the U.S. Forest Service and eventually became a smoke jumper, which is these guys who jump out of airplanes, they parachute down into forest fires that are remote and can't be reached any other way, and they fight the forest fire. But as part of this, he really became in love with forests. So when he joined the Air Force and then finally was accepted to become an astronaut at NASA, he really wanted to do something to honor the Forest Service. All the astronauts were all afraid of the psychological evaluation because they were afraid that if they said anything wrong, the psychologists would say, oh, you know, he's got issues, he can't go into space. Because they didn't know what to say. And they said, Stuart Russo, uh, apparently he walked in there and the guy was looking at his file and said, oh, you were a smoke jumper. He goes, what's that? And Stuart Russo says, oh, well, you know, we, we jump out of airplanes and parachute and we fight these fires. And he said, the guy kind of looked at him and paused and he goes, you know, if you did that, you'll have no problem as an astronaut. And he just kicked him out. <laughs> he just said that was the shortest psych interview ever. <laughs> So when he was chosen for Apollo 14, they came up with this idea to bring tree seeds with him in his personal kit. So he brought about 500 tree seeds up on the Apollo 14 mission. He circled the moon, but as part of the decontamination procedure, they put all the material they brought back with them into a vacuum chamber. And what happened was, unfortunately, they had opened the metal canister before they put it in the vacuum chamber. And when they exposed the, these plastic bags to a vacuum, they just, inflated and they burst and the seeds flew all over the vacuum chamber so now there was a problem of the seeds were all scattered and mixed together stan krugman who was at the forest service in charge of the program at the time told the guys sweep all the seeds up and get them to me and he sat there like something like 500 seeds tiny tiny seeds he sorted them by hand put all the redwood seeds together he put all the sweet gum seeds together all the sycamore seeds together so they were now back together and then the Forest Service germinated them, and then the seeds were planted all over the United States for the bicentennial. They ended up selecting five tree species to take. They were selected fairly carefully to cover a wide geographic range around the United States. So they took Douglas firs, which are sort of the Northwest and the Northern parts of the United States, the redwoods, which are all along the California coast, sycamores, which kind of grow all over the place. They're fairly hardy trees. Loblolly pines, which are mostly southern U.S. plants, and sweet gums, which are sort of in the south and the Midwest and have a fairly wide range also. So those were the five species they brought, and the idea being that you could take some of those trees and grow them almost anywhere in the United States. So the status of the trees, there were 500 seeds, but a lot of them died before they ever were germinated or before they became seedlings. Right now, we've located about 70 trees that are alive, and there's about 40 that have died over the years. So I don't really know how many are out there, and no one knows. What's happened also is there are a lot of second generation moon trees. In other words, people now have taken seeds from first generation moon trees and have planted them. We have a bunch on at Goddard Space Flight Center now, we have a bunch of second generation trees, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these trees. I have no way of keeping track of them. I, originally, when I started doing this, I, I was starting to track these second generation trees and it became uh, 
it's impossible. There's just, there's so many. I have one in my own backyard. I mean, they're all over the place. This next generation of moon trees, which is being planned to go up on the Artemis mission, I'm very excited about it. I think it's cool. You can stuff a heck of a lot of seeds into a little space, so it really is a nice public relations effort for very little cost.